Hi, welcome back to CS170. Um, just want to run through a couple of things before we get into some videos about uh, arrays and, and loops for uh, this week. Uh, so just want to remind people about uh, some stuff I might have mentioned in past videos, but just to reiterate. Um, we changed the landing page, so you have these things highlighted here. These are the main things that you really want to have access to, um, in addition to the media gallery, right, and the files here. Um, so all of this stuff up to here. Uh, if I were to flip to student view, so it should be a, a little bit shorter list of options that you have here to look at and most of the stuff will be kind of percolated up to the top here. And additionally, on the landing page here, we have some quick links in one place you can go to. One for announcement, one for the modules, these are for the recitations, the lab hours, and the course syllabus. Okay, so let me just leave the student view here. back to here so on your home page or landing page here when you come into canvas um, one thing I want to point out well let me go to modules again so here are your modules so you can see at the modules you have all of this course information at the top uh, one of the ones that we normally go to is this uh, student schedules and then week by week you have everything here uh, resources, HTML resources, JavaScript resources, Excel resources, uh, which will be coming. And then here, you see all of these lab hours here, um, you know, anywhere from 8 in the morning until uh, pretty late at night uh, throughout the week. We have like up to 11 p.m. here. You can uh, Go ahead and reach out to uh, any of the TAs here. It doesn't matter whether it's your section or not uh, to get questions answered. Uh, let's say on your assignments, uh, which will be a common thing to do. Uh, make sure you reach out to them, right? So you don't have to just restrict yourself to uh, the TA that you uh, have for your section. You can go to any of these lab hours to get help. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Uh, hopefully that can help you to get your questions answered quickly. Um, you can also email me uh, for my own lab out uh, for my own office hours. You can make sure you uh, just schedule some time with me, email me, uh, and I'll make some time uh, to do a WebEx with you. Okay. Uh, so again, hopefully this is just a refresher, but just to point that out. So what I want to do right now is just go through a couple of different things that are like some common issues. Okay. So one, I think people want to know really what the difference is between uh, JavaScript and HTML. So JavaScript is basically doing calculations uh, and uh, HTML is basically presenting the visuals on the screen, right? So, you know, setting the screen colors and whatnot. Um, and if you see, like, let's say in the, uh, the gas station uh, example here, um, see all of this stuff here where it does an input and you have these radios and whatnot like the text boxes all of that is visual type of stuff and that's how uh, from HTML standpoint you can capture information and then you but you still need to process that information uh, so I capture let's say some information in a text box uh, or a radio in this case here uh, you want to process that information that's where JavaScript comes in and from that standpoint the crossover between HTML and JavaScript is here with on click so when you have on click anything in these double quotes that's all JavaScript code okay so that's one way to do it now a lot of you may have seen from like your uh, assignment 6 uh, the other way to do it is basically doing these prompts uh, and alerts right? you see these alerts so that's how you get information in prompt is getting information in uh, alert is uh, setting uh, pop-up boxes uh, to display information out Okay, again, that's JavaScript, uh, and that's really between these script tags here, right? And this is in the body.
but you could also have script tags within the head also. Okay, and this is within the head, that's probably usually where I would define functions uh, that can be accessed by the JavaScript. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit clearer picture uh, the difference between the JavaScript uh, and HTML and how they fit together. Okay, uh, and notice I did a lot of stuff in JS.do, but if you want to actually put this on a web page, you know, you're basically doing an HTML page, and it's the same skeleton, right? So you have the HTML tags, you have the head, uh, you have the body, right? It's a similar type of stuff, right? I didn't happen to have the meta here. Um, it's not necessarily required, but it's good. Uh, you should have meta in here, so I just happen to leave that out, okay? Um, normally, you might have some styling stuff in here, right? So I might have my CSS. Uh, file or I might just have like some styling that I define here let's say for the body the color the background whatever that's all HTML um, so you have to have all of that um, the JSDO I like to use it just because it's very quick for me to uh, run the code there see if there's a syntax error uh, and see the results very quickly uh, in one place here when I do these type of changes here I save it here and then I flick over to here on a browser to see it. Not that huge of a deal, but just uh, a little bit extra step, so I, I don't prefer to do it that way uh, until I get to almost a final product. All right, so now that I got that uh, part out of the way, let me go through a couple of different things here. Uh, let me see here. Let me click on the gas. HTML. So gas HTML. All right. So see, look, the gas HTML. You remember we set the background color of the body. You know, have we have the radio box? We have these text boxes here. So you see a whole bunch of stuff on the screen, right? Now versus. I look at the Java here, which is, you just see, I only put like a title page at the heading here, right? That's like, you know, it's nothing really. Uh, and then you have your script here. And that's all the JavaScript code. And so that's what this looks like. And that's why you only see like a title page here, right? There's nothing else because everything else is using these boxes uh, that I defined here, okay? All right, so now let's take a look closer here closer look here at the JavaScript on, on some common issues that I saw okay um, so here people were asking me about prompts and alerts right and you know sometimes the calculations weren't coming out right and here's the reason right you see this one times prompt here right this is really to say that this is a variable that has numbers um, and then here this is really saying this is I'm working with a string Right, so when you look at the different types of variables uh, that you can do with JavaScript, there's three three types. There's the Boolean type, which is a true or false. Uh, maybe I should do an example with a Boolean at some point. Um, and then uh, you have numbers, and then you have strings. Okay, so those are the main types of variables that you're going to be dealing with, and you can't just mix and match them, right? So if I do something as a string here, and then all of a sudden I do a a plus in between it, let's say. Uh, JavaScript, JavaScript is going to think of it as you're trying to concatenate those things together. It's not going to think, oh, I should be doing one plus one or whatever if you think you have a number in there. It treats it as a text or as a string. So uh, that's why you need to be, be very careful with this, right? So that's a common issue that I saw, okay? And, you know, this is where you want to do a lot of alert boxes. I know a lot of people, they looked at the final result and they couldn't figure out why they got like some weird results, right? Um, and you have to put like alerts uh, through all these intermediate processing and calculation to see where something has happened unexpectedly that you didn't expect to happen, right? You can't really just look at the end product and say, okay, how come it didn't come out and then be stumped, right? So do the prints or the alerts every step um, and that will help you to find out where your issue is right away, right? So you kind of trace through your code and see how the variables being assigned the way you expect them to be assigned. Uh, so that's my tip. I, I think I mentioned that in my debugging video. Okay. Now another common issue is 
this double equal sign. So these are conditionals, right? Conditionals. Uh, a conditional means if, right? So you have an if, and then you compare one thing to another thing. And if it's true, you're gonna you're gonna do some logic here, okay? So when you do a double equals, that's a comparison, right? When you do a single equals, uh, that's not a comparison, all right? And I actually wrote the example down here, here. So when I run this code later, you'll see in a second. Right? So I did the test compare, and I did a test compare up here. So you can see up here, I set up the variable and I initialized it to A. Now when I do the test compare here, <coughs> I put an equal sign here, which was a very common mistake. I saw a lot of people do stuff like this, right? And I really shouldn't be here, right? Because if you if you remember, I set it to be A up here. That means when I do a compare, it should not pass that, right? And then it shouldn't be alert here, right? But in reality, it will go here because when you do an assignment like this, inside this conditional, it means it's going to be true all the time, right? So that's not great, right? It doesn't, it shouldn't really be going in here. And this is, I'm pretty sure it's unexpected behavior. You're trying to compare something, not assign something. Now, uh, on top of that, to compound issues, um, you know, I'm going to do this display here, and you'll see what happens is that this test compare actually became B now. The whole time you thought this was A, after you did this, you've actually made it into a B, right? Um, and to fix that, I have to reset it to A. Now I do a proper comparison with a double equals, uh, and you get this, right? You get the alert, and then it'll be A, right? And that's what you would expect. So this is hopefully trying to highlight the difference between the equal and double equal, right? Really, for comparison, you need to use at least this. Now. The other thing is there's a triple equal sign, right? So three equal sign, which is fine. In this case, I could do this. Both double equal and triple equal work the same. And what the double equal, the triple equal does, it does more than just compare saying, well, this is A or something like that. Um, it will compare the type, right? The type meaning like, is it a string or is it uh, a number? Uh, and make sure that's the same. Right, so I could define something as a string, let's say number one, two, three, uh, and then also as a number one, two, three. You might think, well, they're the same, but in computer terms, they're not the same, right? Because they're a different type of variable. Uh, so what the triple equal does is to say, is it the same type, right? Most of the time, for what we're doing in here, double equal should be sufficient. But if you want to use triple equal, you can do that, but just be understanding of what triple equal means. The triple equal is comparing the type of variable, making sure that's the same also. All right, so that's one thing. Now, the other thing is um, a lot of people have some issues with the if else, right? And it gets really confusing if you don't do some indenting or some system of lining things up, okay? Uh, and you see here, what I did was I tried to line up these curly brackets so that I can keep track of the if else, right? So if else, this is the typical format, right? So you do an if comparison, these brackets, and do something in here, else, you have another bracket and another bracket here, and then you do a code of uh, code, uh, you do a block of code here, okay? That's the proper format, right? So I saw a lot of people where they might do another if at the end, uh, like here or something. Uh, that's not correct, all right? So you need to stick to this type of format. Um, and I believe there was a pre some pretty good example of that here. Under W3 schools. All right, so you can see if else, um, and you can see some nesting here, right? Uh, so you can stick around uh, and play around with this if you want and check it out. But see this last one here, else this, right? So it's not like else if, else if, else if, and then the last one being if. I saw a lot of people do that, and that's not correct, right? This is last one right here, okay? And even to look at this, I, me personally, I get a little confused on this. And that's why I prefer to do the, the blocks that I did before. Um, so like I try to line them up and then I do an indent here. 
uh, and then have another block and then I do another indent and line it up like this. And see this last one here? If, else, and that's it. Okay? Uh, so first I check it's A, I check if it's a B, uh, I check if it's a C. If it's not A, B, or C, then I do an else, and that catches everything else that's not A, B, or C. Okay? Um, if that's not the way you want to do it, if you just want to say, is it A, B, or C, and I don't care about anything else, then you would just do separate if clauses. All right? You do a couple extra comparisons, but I think for this class that's fine. That's not the end of the world. Um, you're not really trying to optimize this in terms of numbers of comparisons. So you just do standalone ifs, you know, just compare A, then do another if statement, compare B, then do another if statement, compare C. You know, not ideal from a computing standpoint, but like I said, for this class, I don't think it's that big of a deal. You can do it that way too. Save yourself the grief of having like a mixed up if else statement, right? But if you want to do if else, this is the to me, this is the right way to go about doing it. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to highlight was a common issue here uh, is people doing stuff like this, right? So you, I know you might want to initialize variables and try to jam everything up there. I personally like to keep things separate and I like to just say, okay, here's a variable. I set it to zero, I set it to blank, or I set it to something like this, and then that's it. Any other types of uh, computation, I keep it separate from the variable declaration. Okay, you could do this, uh, but in practice, I try not to do stuff like this. Uh, so this is a bad initialize. Right, so I set the variable to be bad initialized, and look at what I did here. Test compare plus ABC. Right, the problem here is that I don't declare a test compare down until here. Right, so sequence matters. Right, there's no way that you're going to get this feeding up to here because I didn't do it until down here. Right? So this bad initialize is not going to be good. Okay, and I'm I'm going to show this to you in a print in a second. All right, so this is not good. All right, uh, and so I saw a lot of stuff like this. This is why I prefer to just initialize everything cleanly here, and then do whatever calculations you want to do further down. Okay, and you know make sure that there's variables. I mean, there's assignments in all of these. So if you make sure you initialize all of these to something, it could be blank, it could be a or zero or whatever, and then you do the calculation down here. It's not bulletproof, but at least you can be pretty sure you're not going to get something like this, right? This is just not going to work at all, okay? Now, there is still some potential for you to mix things up later on, uh, but I think there's less chance if you do that, right? Uh, so I have it here. I show what this is. And again, this is going to the point where you want to do an alert uh, to show these variables because you know, people magically at the end are asking me like, why, why did it turn out to be this? Well, if you do like an alert uh, each step away, let's say I did an alert up top here to say, okay, is bad initialized what I expect it to be? Um, you'll see that it's not what you expect it to be, right? So do the alerts and don't just look at the end and wonder how you got there, right? There, there's a reason why you got to it and you need to do those alerts um, on the uh, stuff that feeds into your calculations, the variables that feed into your calculations. Okay, and then the last thing, hopefully this kind of demonstrates it a little bit too. You can see, remember I told you the distinction between variable types, right? It could be a number or it could be a string. This is part of the reason. When you do the uppercase, obviously this doesn't apply to a number, it only applies to a string. So that's why this should line up to this. If I try to do days, and I try to do two uppercase, it's going to cause you a problem, right? And a lot of you saw some errors because of that, okay? The other thing is when you go to two fixed, that doesn't apply to uh, strings. This only applies to a number. Uh, so again, so this is both examples where if you don't get the type right, um, this is not, these things, these functions are not going to work properly, okay? So hopefully that covered all the common issues that I've been seeing. Uh, let's see what happens when we run this code. Okay, so I entered the days. Let me just enter some numbers here. Two, three, four. And let me enter a string. I'm going to enter B. Okay. 
So I went into the part where it says uh, B, right? Because I said string is type B, right? So it had to be here to get into this part. And then to fix, you can see it's 10.23. So it rounded off the two decimal places like I expected. All right? This page says should not be here, okay? Which is right here, right? And again, like I said, we shouldn't be here. Uh, the reason why we're here is because we did this as assignment test compare equals to b. We really should have done uh, double equals to b and then this window popped up. And then to make things worse we actually see test compare became b, right? So that's why I have this alert here, test compare. This is test compare, it became b. So now you see the next line here, I changed it to a. And now we have a good compare, right? Good compare meaning I have the double equal to A, and this is the good compare, right? Now the last part here, we have the bad initialize, and you can see undefined ABC, right? So test compare is undefined, okay? Um, so now I'm going to do the bad initialize, and now that I've got the test compare variable correct, uh, and then plus ABC, then the bad initialize should be good now. And here we go. So bad initialize is A. Okay. Bad initialize is A. Okay. All right. You remember test compare? I set it back to A here. All right. So test compare plus ABC became bad initialize. And then I did alert for bad initialize. And that's why you have A, ABC. Okay, um, so with that, I'll wrap it up. I'm going to be creating some new videos for uh, the new uh, material for this week, but hopefully this answered a lot of the common questions that I saw coming through for this past week. Um, give me a shout if there's any questions. Thank you.